secular astrophysicist who seemingly was forced to acknowledge that there must be an extra-dimensional intelligence of some kind responsible for the sudden and outward expansion of this cosmos, commonly referred to, of course, as the Big Bang. And he wrote this, quote, we live in a universe that came into existence through an exquisitely orchestrated, hold on to that, burst of energy, matter, and space-time at a specific moment in the past. Hubble Space Telescope images of distant galaxies provide really visual evidence that we live in a universe that arose from and continues to expand from a singular creation event. Now, I highlighted the words exquisitely orchestrated and creation in his statement. Well, why? Well, if something is orchestrated, we typically are going to be looking for an orchestra leader, orchestra director, right? If something is created, well, by logical definition, it would have to have a creator. Well, I'm going to urge you now to keep an open mind and weigh the evidence up ahead very carefully. All right. Most of us have heard of the now deceased, world-renowned mathematician, astrophysicist, and ultimately metaphysicist, Dr. Stephen Hawking. Now, Hawking was so tragically crippled, as you probably know, um, and paralyzed by ALS. But he was quoted once as saying this, cosmology is a religion for the intelligent atheist. Wow. Now I don't know if Dr. Hawking said just a bit more than he intended to there, but, but notice he seems to admit that atheism is, is not a complete lack of religion. I, I think that's what many of us would say. Well, we thought atheism meant you don't want to be involved with a religion at all. But rather he's saying it, it's held too tightly as if it were a type of atheist religion. Uh, sometimes that's called scientism uh, by scientists in the intelligent design movement. It's a form of religion, scientism. Now, as you certainly know by now, we believe that the evidence strongly points to a creator of this vast universe, including, of course, all life on planet Earth and that this creator exists eternally outside of this space-time dimension and is the uncreated cause of everything in this dimension. Now interestingly, Christianity and the Bible's description of such a being match up perfectly with much of the new science over the last half century or so concerning discoveries of the staggering amount of fine-tuning of this universe balanced on a razor edge, some scientists have said, in the ID movement. And so in that light, Dr. Stephen Meyer is probably the most widely known, respected, and among the most brilliant uh, spokesmen, certainly, and researchers in the field of intelligent design. Now, Meyer has written three monumental books, all bestsellers, over recent years on the newest science of uh, intelligent design, and you'll see them up on the screen now. Signature in the Cell, uh, Darwin's Doubt, and then his latest this capstone volume entitled Return of the God Hypothesis. So watch and listen now to Dr. Meyer in this great compacted summary, I think, of the fast-growing case for design of the cosmos. Modern physics has revealed evidence of design in the very fabric of the universe. Physicists have discovered that the fundamental physical parameters of our universe have been finely tuned against all odds to make our universe capable of hosting life. Even the slightest alterations in the values of key factors, such as the strength of gravity or electromagnetism or the masses of elementary particles, would render life impossible. We live in a kind of Goldilocks universe where the fundamental forces of physics have just the right balance and the properties of matter have just the right characteristics and configurations to make life possible. To illustrate this idea, the late Cambridge physicist Sir John Polkinghorne imagined a universe-creating machine with numerous dials, each representing some critical parameter. The various dials each have an almost infinite range of settings, yet all are set just right. Not surprisingly, Polkinghorne and many physicists have concluded that the improbable cosmic fine-tuning of our actual universe points to a cosmic fine-tuner. As legendary Cambridge astrophysicist Sir Fred Hoyle argued, a common-sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super-intellect has monkeyed with physics to make life possible.
Could this super intellect have been an alien? Not a chance. Cosmic fine-tuning has been present from the beginning of the universe and thus cannot be explained by any agent that arises after the beginning. Instead, fine-tuning is better explained by an intelligent agent outside the universe who could design its structure as a whole. To avoid this conclusion, some physicists have postulated another speculative hypothesis, the existence of a vast number of other parallel universes. This so-called multiverse idea portrays our universe as the outcome of a cosmic lottery in which some universe-generating mechanism spits out billions and billions of universes, so many that our universe, with its improbable combination of life-conducive factors, would eventually have to arise. Yet advocates of the multiverse overlook an obvious problem. All such proposals, whether based on something called inflationary cosmology or string theory, postulate universe-generating mechanisms that themselves require prior, unexplained fine-tuning, thus taking us back to the need for an ultimate or transcendent fine-tuner or designing intelligence. Many of us call this intelligence God fine-tuning that's being observed in the data gathering from a number of scientific disciplines. But over a century or so at least, this has been occurring, but even just almost an avalanche of new data coming in over the last, say, 20 years. Modern science has just gone by an inviolable commandment in the past, and that is, thou shalt not pass from science theories to something in the area of uh, another dimensional being, unquote. We people of faith, okay, and there I am, I'm talking about my bias now, people of faith simply refer to that being again as God. All right, now, here's the next step. You know, for centuries, scientists and, and philosophers have wondered about the origins of things, and specifically the origins of the universe when they would look up in the night sky, and have just wondered about the, what they're seeing up there. Did all this have a beginning? Or was it eternal? Was it always there? But in our generation, scientific discoveries by astronomers, astrophysicists, um, and exobiologists have opened up a, a new world of understanding of a universe that's rich in mystery and majesty. An analysis from the incredible detail streaming in from deep space, uh, you know, I'm talking about Hubble, uh, the Hubble, the Space Telescope, COBE now, the new Webb Space Telescope, and other spacecraft, just revealing stunning photos. greatly appreciate your telling us specifically a bit about the carefully balanced design inherent uh, within this universe and our solar system. So, Dr. Miller. So, what I'll do, do with you in the next few minutes is just give you a quick tour of what this evidence is in our universe that points to a creator. Is one is the force of gravity. Because if you imagine what the force of gravity could have been, and you could imagine it could have been anywhere from zero to the, the, the strength of the strong nuclear force, which is the strongest force that we have in nature. And that's the force that holds the uh, protons and neutrons together. And what happens is in order for the universe to support life, you would have to set gravity correct to one part in 10 to the power of 35. That's a one over one with 35 zeros. So the precision that you would need to set gravity on your universe generating machine for the universe to support life is the same precision you would need if you were shooting a target that was one inch by one inch at the other end of our solar system. That's the sort of precision you need to develop to create a universe that can support life. And a second example is what's called the cosmological constant. And this constant represents what would be considered the background energy of space. And what it does is it causes the universe to expand. And what happens is if you look at uh, fields of physics like uh, particle theories, 
or, or quantum field theories, we would expect that this energy that permeates space would be so large that our universe would fly apart in an instant. Every atom would be like millions of, gal of light years away. But what happens is there's some sort of compensating value to this cosmological constant. And that compensating value has to be set correct to one part in 10 to the power of 90. That's the one with 90 zeros behind it. Because if it was slightly greater or slightly smaller, what would happen is our universe would either fly apart, and of course life would not be possible, or it would crunch together into a giant black hole. So those are just two of multiple examples of details of our universe that have to be set just right for our universe to support life. But it isn't just that we see the evidence of a mind behind the laws of nature. We also see extraordinary evidence of design related to everything from the nature of our planet to chemistry to biology. In fact, Sir Fred Hoyle is a cosmologist, a person who studies the universe, and he it was an atheist before, and before he died. He now believes in God, obviously. But when he was alive, he wanted to, to not accept the evidence of design in nature, but he realized the evidence of design was so overwhelming he could ignore it. So what he said was the common sense interpretation of the data suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics as well as with chemistry and biology. And again, what we find is people have desperately tried to rationalize the way the evidence of design our universe. And the way they've done, it, done that is they said maybe there's not just one universe, but maybe there's countless universes. And these universes have slightly different laws of nature. That we just happen to be the one, we just happen to be in the universe that won the lottery and just happens to have the right details that allows for life. Well, the problem is when you look at all the theories that supposedly explain how these multiverses could come about, those theories, whether it be in eternal inflation or string landscape theory or quantum cosmology, they all have parameters that also have to be incredibly fine-tuned for these multiverse generating systems to produce a universe like ours. So the evidence of fine-tuning is inescapable. But it's not just the laws of physics. If you look at our planet, there are countless details of our planet that have to be carefully set for life to exist. Our atmosphere has to have the right amount of oxygen because if there is too much, it would cause our body to decay like an, an apple core would rot in the air. If there is too little oxygen, we wouldn't be able to have enough energy to have active lifestyles. The sun is very stable, it produces the right type of energy, the earth is the right distance from the sun, and there's other details. But uh, in addition, our planet has uh, a core that rotates, a magma that rotates and produces an electric current. And that produces a magnetic field that protects us from solar radiation. If that magnetic field were not there, then uh, charged radiation from the sun would kill us very quickly. But beyond that, what you see is that our planet is not only designed for life, but it's also designed for scientific investigation and cultural advancement. So for instance, our atmosphere doesn't only allow just the right energy through. It allows heat, it allows light, but it blocks the harmful radiation like x-rays and, uh, and uh, microwaves. But also the atmosphere is transparent so that we can study the stars. That's really remarkable. Also, it so happens that the light that goes through is just the perfect light for photosynthesis. It's the perfect light for heat and many other details that are necessary for light.